That was Alice in Chains and Wood. And that song is on the single soundtrack as well as the brand new record about to be released. This is Mike from Alice in Chains. Why don't you tell us about Dirt? It's heavy. It's heavier than facelift. So um, if you like facelift, it's, you'll like it. How about Sap the Acoustic EP? How does it compare to that? Well, there's a couple of songs on the new album that are um, like comparable to the slower Sap stuff, but most of the album's really heavy, really different. No grunge though. <laughs> where, where did the where did the name Dirt come from? It sounded cool. Yeah. You like that? It does. I like it. All right, cool. Oh, uh, what about touring? You gonna tour soon? We're going on tour October, November, and December, and we're gonna headline. We got a couple of opening bands that we're talking to right now and trying to put something together. So we'll be in your town soon. Cool. You should check them out as well as more here on MTV's Smells Like Grunge countdown. We got Nirvana and Mud Honey after the break. Palooza is now over. How now? Looking back. <laughs> How would you, uh, wh what comes to mind? Um, well, what comes to mind is all the friends that uh, I made on the tour and, and how difficult it's going to be to keep in touch with everyone and how much we're all going to want to do that. So maybe we'll have to just do another thing. I guess next year maybe we'll go on tour and bring all the Lollapalooza bands with us and open up for all of them. So, so when you were growing up, what were some, some of the heaviest bands influencing you? Heaviest bands. The heaviest band, the definitely the heaviest band that influenced me was Zeppelin. But, you know, Pink Floyd and, and Hart and just every great band, really. I mean, I was so into, you know, my dad turned me on to Grand Funk Railroad and that was like the start of something right there and it just went on from there. How does it feel though now you're in a band that's influencing people as we speak? What, what does that feel like? I really, you know, I, I guess it'll, it would hit me harder when I go to a club and see somebody playing one of the songs, you know, but um, I haven't gotten to do that yet. I'm looking forward to that, but it, it blows me away when people come up and say, you know, wow, you know, Stones is totally influencing my guitar, you know, do you know how he tunes his guitar and stuff like that? It, it's a trip, you know, we've been touring now for a year or so, I really haven't had time to sit back and, and take it all in. I've been more kind of skimming the surface, waiting, waiting for the day I can sit back and go, wow, you know, this is real, it is really happening, so. Pretty trippy. Yeah, isn't it though? Isn't it though? Anyway, uh, we're gonna move on with Mark Arm. He's one of the one of the proponents of the Seattle scene and his band Mud Honey. And this is a video called Into the Drink. Have fun playing the Music Awards a couple weeks back. Um, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. We got to meet like a lot of cool people. And Elton John was like a really really cool guy. And hung out with uh, the Black Crows guys. Um, Did you get along with them? Yeah, yeah. They're, I mean, they're 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 pretty cool guys. Um, we felt totally underdressed around those guys, though. Like we, we kind of showed up in like our normal kind of leisurely attire, and they were all kind of decked out in their velvet and satin garb. And it was like 95 degrees out, so it must have been it must have been an effort. Yeah, it was rock, though. <laughs> and everybody did rock. You sounded really good. Did you have a uh, good time? Yeah, yeah. It was it was it was great. It was like a lot. It, it was more painless than I thought it was going to be. I mean, I thought it was going to be more of a hassle, and it was like it was cool just. Just hanging out and seeing people that you grew up listening to, like I said, Elton John and people like that, Mick so, Jagger. Now, Lollapalooza is pretty much done. What, what you know? How do you feel about it? Well, th there's a part of me that's going to miss a lot of those people. I mean, there's a lot of pretty amazing crew people and and and, and band members that that I think I think we're going to miss a lot of that. At the same time, we've been touring for a year and and I'm so kind you're, of you're going to take a break. Home. Yeah, I'm kind of excited to go home and actually remember what it's like to kind of be in the same place for more than two or three days. And okay, cool. Well, you deserve a break, man. Definitely. Yeah. Indeed. Jeff Hammett from Pearl Jam, but right now we got Allison Chains in at our countdown at number five. I have audio and video videos to the concept version. It was a lot easier because we were only needed for about uh, a nine hour day rather than a 24 hour day or a uh, all nighter or a two day shoot because uh, we just filmed all, when we were over in England touring. Uh, Mark Pellington is the guy that did the video. Just came over. We were into soundstage. Shot all the uh, all the just the band stuff, which is pretty limited. You know, most of it's just of Eddie. Um, and then he just filled in, and we just kept he kept sending it rough copies to us, and he kept adding more stuff on on it and filming it, filming more stuff, and all the newspaper clippings and all the headlines and all that stuff kind of came on afterwards. So it was it was very interesting, but it was a lot easier to do. Which so. Philosophically, do, is Pearl Jam a band that really believes in videos, or is it just a necessary evil? I think it depends on who you ask. I think uh, I think videos, uh, if they're done um, well, have as much artistic um, merits as, as anything done artistically. Um, 
but I think if you rely only on videos to, uh, to um, I don't know, showcase your band, I think uh, it's kind of a sad thing in general. But this song, at least Jeremy, it seemed like an appropriate song for a concept. It has a, there's a lot of powerful lyrics in it, and I think that uh, whereas even Flo and, and Alive really seemed like just go out there and kind of show the band, uh, Jeremy definitely seemed like something that could be enhanced by a video in a certain ways. So we went for it. And Mark Pellington is a, a genius, so um, when you work with really good people, then you sometimes you get good things. So well, I believe it turned out quite well. Uh, quite nice mix of video and audio. And when we come back, we've got what would have to be, I suppose, the grungiest video ever in the history of... What do you think grunge means? I don't even say that word. Really? Good. Next, we have number one on our countdown. Nobody's seen this for a hundred years.